And then when she went to pay, she pulled it off and inside was her money. That rules! <laughs> <laughs> that rules! It's my favorite! I want a wallet like that. I like screamed. I was so and, excited. And she was dressed up as Loki. President Loki. Yeah. yeah. President Loki. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Steve Irwin's son dressed up as President Loki? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that's so crazy. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I uh, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna throw up this weekend. Yeah, just oh, good. Hi. Hi. How's everybody doing today? Uh, I'm Dallas Reed. I'm Jill Harris. I play Asta. Uh, and I play Noelle in Black Clover. Welcome to the Black Clover Q&A panel. Um, we got answers. Hopefully, <laughs> we all got questions. <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you have like a non-Black Clover question that is not okay and you have to leave, um, <laughs> just kidding, it's totally fine. That rule will loosen up as we run out of Black Clover questions. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess without further ado, we'll turn it over to the room. If anybody's got anything, any burning questions they would like to ask, just throw your hand up. Oh, yes. Ah. Um, I'm just kind of curious. Was Asta really just ringing on your voice to play? Uh, I get that one a lot, and the answer often surprises people because, no, broadly. Um, for the first uh, half of the first season, uh, that first core, like, you know, the first 12 episodes or so, it, uh, it did kind of strain me a little bit because I wasn't doing it right. Um, there was a lot of, uh, I don't know what the term for it is, but there was a lot of throat ruination, uh, <laughs> because the scream was coming from here rather than here. Uh, but once I learned how to put it here, it's not an issue. Uh, yeah, your, your voice was a little bit higher, um, and people are like, did your voice get deeper? And not really, you just put it in a different place. Yes, yeah, it's just an issue of placement. Yeah, and if you would like to learn how to scream safely, it's in your chest. Yeah. If it hurts at all, you're doing it wrong. Cool. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, how did you both get started with voice acting? Me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so I know our stories are very different, uh, so you're going to get two very different answers. Um, I was very intentional intentional about it. Um, I am an anime fan, just like you guys. I used to go to conventions. Well, I still do, but now I'm <laughs> a guest. Um, but yeah, uh, I was an anime fan. Uh, I did a lot of theater in high school and in college. Um, I actually... My cousin is a professional voice actress in Nashville. She helped me set up my own home studio, and when I was 16, I started booking video games, audiobooks, uh, original animations. Just started recording from home. Uh, it was a great way to get practice. Um, then when I was about 20, I moved to Dallas, Texas, uh, sent my demo in to Funimation, and uh, got called in, did, you know, some Walla, did some auditions, and I've just kind of been working there ever since. Uh, so yes, I, I was a girl with a mission to be an anime voice actor, and it worked out. Well, let me take you back <laughs> to 1993 in a small, huge hospital called Baltimore Memorial. A young man was born and they named him Dallas, inexplicably, <laughs> even though he lived in Maryland. And when that boy was seven years old, they took him down to Texas on account of dad lost his job. So when he got to Texas, he went to school, and then when he turned about 17, he went, man, I gotta find something to do. And so he joined a theater class, and the theater teacher told him, if you don't audition, fourth play, 
I will find a reason to fail you. And I auditioned for the play so that, that wouldn't happen. Uh, and I got in the play, uh, disco discovered that even though I was sort of blackmailed into it, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and so I just kind of kept doing it through the rest of high school, through college. And then while I was in college, I needed money to pay for the college. So I got a job at the college. And then I worked at the college for a while, and there was an anime fan that worked in the same part of the college that I did. And one day he approached me and he said, hey, I saw your name on the cast list for the school play that's coming around this season. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, hope you come out and see it. We're all having a lot of fun making this importance of being earnest play. It's so much fun, we're all having a great time. And he went, are you any good? And I went, that's kind of a rude question. <laughs> and he was like, well, I don't want to wait to find out. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm not gonna give you an honest evaluation, but yeah, I think so. And he was like, okay, send an email to this address. They do anime 20 minutes from here. And if you are good, you could make money doing this. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> and I sent the email, not really expecting anything. And then six months later, I got an email that was like, hey, it's your turn. Uh, and I went up there, I did the open auditions process that I don't think they still do anymore. Um, but yeah, they, I got lucky enough that the director who was running the open auditions that week had something coming up they thought that I had the right voice for and it just kind of snowballed from there. So I am in a lot of ways the opposite of my wife here. Um, she is often very intentional and I am more like a leaf that has just picked up an errant gust of wind and it's over here now. And, but whatever gets you there, it's possible either way. Just out of curiosity, uh, do you remember who ran the open? Was it Joel? Uh, no, they, well I think Joel was running the open as well, but the director that I ended up with was uh, Colleen Quickenbeard. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it was wow. very, very, very nerve-wracking. <laughs> she is an intimidating, powerful presence. Um, <laughs> And also, probably the only person I've met that is as naturally booming as I am. Uh, and it's just weird when you have a voice, when you have a voice that people have told you to like keep in check your entire life, and then you walk into a room for an audition and the person you meet also says, hi, with like a huge boom to it, you're like, oh, maybe I belong here. <laughs> and it turns out I did. Um, Awesome, thank you for that question. Yeah. Uh, any others? Oh, yep, right in the front. What was your first major role that you had? Uh, my first major role uh, in, in anime uh, was a anime called Rumpo Kitan. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's rated R because it's a uh, crime show, so there's a lot of gore. Uh, but I worked on that with Jerry Jewell. He's one of my favorite directors. I probably shouldn't say that, but like he <laughs> is. Um, yeah. And that was back, that was back, uh, we mostly do simul dubs now, but that was back when we were doing DVD dubs. <laughs> yeah. The good old days. The good old days. Uh, and we really do mean that. There was, there's really something about like, it's a, it's a part of this job that we don't often get to do anymore, but to, like, get a six-hour day on the calendar, you go in there, you knock out six episodes, you feel like you just did the impossible. You made so much anime today. It's and also really cool when, like, Tara emails you and she's like, hey, I need 50 hours with you over the next two months, and you're just like, oh my gosh, yes! Yeah, <laughs> sweet! <laughs> uh, but yeah, my first major role was another one of those DVD uh, dubs, and I guess it was my first major, but my first lead, uh, his name was Kimito in a show called Showman Sample, uh, which was really fun. Um, a lot of times when you when you start in the industry and people start as a as a male type voice, if you start in the industry. Um, and people are like, oh, you've, you've actually got the chops for this. Often the first sort of lead they will try you out on is uh, in a harem show. Um, and that was the case with this as well. It's maybe one of my favorite, well, 
At the time, it was one of my favorite premises I had seen in an anime. I don't think it's aged particularly well, uh, but he was kidnapped from a regular public school and taken to an all-girl elite high school uh, under the auspices of teaching them what a normal person's day-to-day -day life is like and to also get them used to talking to men their age. And the reason they selected him for this uh, was because they assumed he was gay and would <laughs> therefore not be a danger to any of the girls on the campus. And he wasn't a danger to any of the girls on the campus, but not for the reasons they thought. Uh, he was just kind of weird, awkward, and afraid. Um, didn't, he, didn't he get kidnapped by like a bunch of ripped men yeah, too? Yeah, like <laughs> three totally ripped dudes. Like he's just sitting, he's just sitting there, he's at high school, he's asleep, he had a hard night. A hard night of gaming or whatever he was doing. And then his friend walks up to him and says, hey, go to the school store, buy me some bread. Right now? Yeah, right now. <sighs> okay. And so he leaves the class all dejected. Man, I was trying to sleep. He turns to look this way, and here comes the boys. <laughs> <laughs> they load him up into this limo, and they're all like, I'm going to stand up for a second. They're... <laughs> And he is, of course, like, what? What? No, what? No, what? No, stop! And then he wakes up at the school for elite girls. Uh, and the show begins. Uh, that was my first major one. A lot of fun. Like I said, not sure the premise has aged extremely gracefully, but still a very fun project to work on. Hey, your parents got a hot tub, too. <laughs> I didn't catch the last part. On your free time, right? Uh, yep. Uh, didn't used to pay as much, as close attention to the flaps, the, the mouth flaps. Now I can't not look at the mouth flaps. And I'm just like, oh, that was a double flap. Oh, that was half a syllable short. Like, I'm just, uh, it is, I cannot turn off my work brain when I watch anime now. Um, but I still do like to watch anime um, because, um, I do like a smidge of directing, uh, and I like to help out with casting when I can. So I do like to watch it just to stay um, abreast of new talent and just be like, oh, I haven't heard that person before and they're sounding really good. Like, might bring them in for Walla on my next thing or whatever. Um, so yeah, I watch it with work in mind now. Uh, and for me, uh, my brain is sort of a series of boxes that different parts of my life find their way into depending on the circumstances they fit. Um, and anime used to fit squarely in my entertainment box when I was, you know, growing up. I'd watch it, love it, all that shonen stuff was my absolute jam. Uh, and then as the work started, it moved into sort of a research portion of my brain where I was watching anime to figure out what people were doing, what the sound was what the different techniques that other directors were using. And then after I found my footing and I had kind of worked with every director and I had kind of figured out their styles, it then moved from or the research portion of my brain to the work portion of my brain. And now uh, it takes something really special to catch my attention and rework itself into that entertainment spot or that research spot. Uh, and it's really, it's, it's gotten, as the years have gone on, it's gotten more difficult for me to find anime that I can just shut down the parts of my brain that make anime more difficult to watch for whatever reason. Um, also, it's like really weird, like let's say you're watching an anime, it's got a hunky guy in it, voiced by Ian Sinclair. You're like, oh, I know that guy. <laughs> uh. So it is a little bit weird. Um, I do, 
I, I do watch in English to hear people, like I said, uh, but I do try to uh, watch in Japanese as well or avoid things that my friends are in if I know it's going to be awkward. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Yeah, one. It's right. more of a request than a question. I was wondering if you guys could act out a scene where Noel gives Asta some flannel to wear, but Asta doesn't want to wear it because it shapes him so. But Noel is very insistent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay, flannel wear? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do have to say, though, please, no filming. Uh, because the Japanese can be kind of... Yeah, this is the... Our, our contracts are actually kind of specific about the ways in which we are allowed to use our character voices. Okay. Um, like, this can be kind of a fun thing we can do, but like, if this is the internet, that's suddenly a copyright issue. Yeah. Uh, I so. can pause it for the time being. I'm just here for the con itself. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, Thank you so much. Yeah, pause that real quick. Uh, <laughs> All right, who else we got? Hmm. Right, yeah. Um, uh, just as like a, a, a little personal question about the show, who is your guys' favorite characters who aren't your own in Black Clover? Charmy. Charmy. <laughs> yeah, three, two, one, Charmy. Um, <laughs> absolutely, hands down, no questions asked. Charmy, the best. Oh, and Sarah Weedy have brings that like gremlin energy that is necessary. Oh my gosh, I am jealous. But also, no one could play Charmy. Just no one else could play Charmy. One of the most important things about the role is eating noises. <laughs> and you gotta go with who you know is gonna go hog wild on whatever cue you give them. She is a tiny, petite girl, but she can eat. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sarah, if you, put, if you put Sarah in a show, you have cast my favorite character, congratulations. Like, it's, it's, she can bring a life to a role in a way that, like, she's just infinitely castable. Um, and I think that we could have put her anywhere in the show and it would have been fantastic, but the decision to put her as Charmy was the only truly correct one. Uh, and it works so well. <laughs> oh, yep. Um... <laughs> Noel doesn't get to scream very often, but, um, oh, I forgot the guy's name, but, um, when, Rummy. um, David Wald's character. Oh, Beto. Beto. Uh, when she's fighting Beto, she gets to do a big, long, like, nine-second proper Asta level <laughs> scream, and I was very scared that I was going to pass out. I didn't. Uh, but I did get very lightheaded, uh, and that just felt really good, because I walked in, I was like, I don't know if I can do this, and the director was like, well, we're gonna try, and I was like, uh, okay, and I got it, so that just felt really good. Um, for me, my favorite scene that I voice acted is in the early series, it's where he sees Yami at the uh, Magic Knight's entrance exam, and he thinks that he's another student, uh, and he's just like, oh, wow, that kid is huge. Huge! <laughs> and he's like really scared of him and he goes, no, 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 come on, don't be that way, you can't judge a book by its cover. And he walks up to him and he reaches a full two feet up and he puts his hand right on Yami's shoulder and he goes, ha, you look really old for your age, you must have had a rough life, huh? And Yami just reaches a foot and a half down and grabs him by the top of the head and says, you got a death wish? And Asta's mental line there is a huge scream that I accidentally went full Goofy from Goof Troop on. And I was like, should I do that again? And Chris George was like, no, absolutely not. That was perfect. <laughs> so it was like a Goofy scream. The whole, the whole ahuhuhuhoy. Uh, followed immediately by the line, this book's got the right cover. <laughs> and that
that is, I think, maybe my favorite comedic line in the show, because Yami's book has exactly the right color. And uh, that's my favorite scene I've recorded. My favorite scene in the show is in the very late, uh, so slight spoilers, uh, there's a character named uh, Xenon, uh, played very capably and very funly by Zeno Robinson. Um, and the scene where Yuno is giving it everything he's got and Xena just sort of, without even engaging his muscles, shatters Yuno's sword. And we got this in one take, because it's Zeno. He just looks at him and he's just like, it's not, do you see what your problem is? It isn't that you're weak. I'm just that much better. And it just sort of fades to black, and it's over for Yuno that episode. And when he wakes up, half of his squad is dead. And that was just like the polar opposite of the scene that I just described. It's, I think, maybe my favorite dramatic moment in Black Clover, and I'm, I, got, I, got, I have chills just kind of thinking about it. Uh, that was a scene that I got to direct, and I really enjoyed that. Because uh, Micah and Zeno, they both, like, they, they played off of each other so well. Uh, any other? Yes? What's Noelle's insistence on acting like she doesn't have the thing for Austin? Like, if we want to get real into it, I I don't think she knows. Like, I really don't think, I think it's the first time she's felt these feelings and she can't identify them and she finds them really annoying. She's like, man, every time I'm around this guy, my like heart speeds up and I feel really hot and like nervous and oh, I hate feeling that way. When so. he looks at me, my face feels weird. <laughs> yeah, I I think. Her cousin had expressed like out in the open that she. Because Mimosa is more emotionally intelligent. Uh, <laughs> Noel is just, and quite frankly, Noel's just deeply insecure, and I think all she's thought about is just trying to prove to her family that she is worthy, that she hasn't t had time to explore other emotions or other facets of her life, which, uh, this is a boring answer, but like, uh, just what I think. Um, and I think eventually she will realize what those feelings mean and be like, oh, I love this dude. I love this dude. This dude? <laughs> I love this dude. Uh, yeah, I think um, I, I, I agree with you. She doesn't know. Uh, and to get into that a little deeper, I think we can look at her family and the way that she was raised. Um, when you are a child, the thing that you model what affection looks and feels like is from the folks that raised you, the people that you were around as you were growing up. And everyone in her life hated her outwardly from the moment she was born because she killed their mom. She killed his, his wife, like, she, by the simple act of being born, murdered another person that all of these people loved. And so she was never going to experience unconditional, forget unconditional love. She, isn't going, she wasn't going to experience unconditional tolerance from even the closest members of her family. And I think that her, her feelings for Asta are confusing but her feelings toward everyone else on the Black Bulls are equally confusing, and there's not even any romance involved there. Like, forget dating, forget romance, she doesn't even know what a friend feels like. I think that Noelle is an incredibly sad character in the early goings of Black Clover because she just doesn't have a reference point for the things that many of us are lucky enough to have had our entire lives. So she doesn't recognize those feelings because she doesn't have access to them. No one ever taught her. But she's learning, as Jill said, from the people she's met now. Very sad answer. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, I saw your hand go first. Uh, springboard on that. What do you think about Asta? Do you think other than the sister, would his love, would he have, actually have a true love of one of the other characters? I think Asta's wires are crossed in a pretty upsetting way, <laughs> if we're being honest, because that is essentially his mom. <laughs> and I don't know what other way to put it. Uh, yeah, I, uh, so I think Asta is similar to Noel in that he's like, oh, but he's misinterpreting the feelings. Oh, I feel warm and buzzy when I'm around this person. And people talk about that's what love is, so I must love her. And you do love her, but not in that way. Also, uh, I think a lot of Asta's definition of love is protection. And he has, at least from his perspective, his entire life protected the orphanage, protected his brothers and sisters, protected Sister Lily, and yet yeah, you know helped a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but like, he, I think he just wants, he seeks a connection that involves in some way keeping someone important to him safe. Uh, and I think eventually he will come to realize that the type of love he has for Sister Lily is fully platonic, at least I hope. Because <laughs> the age difference alone. <laughs> uh, and I think you have one? Yeah. Do you both do research um, into the source material for Roll Peter Pascal? And what extent, I guess, is that research? Um, sorry, I missed part of that. Were, are you talking exclusively of Black Clover or just everything? Um, both, I guess, Black Clover and just Okay, um, well for Black Clover, uh, I, I do read the manga. Um, I try not to read too, too far ahead because I, I, I do like to be, not surprised, but like, you know, I don't like to see 20 episodes ahead or whatever. Um, it kind of depends on other projects. Um, uh, if I sense that a character is very complex uh, and I'm having an difficult time getting them, um, I will uh, seek out the manga or light novels if they're light novels. Um, but mostly I just, I try to watch the anime. Um, if I have time, I try to watch the whole anime uh, before I go in to record, but don't always have time. Uh, and don't often get told who you're playing. So that, you know, our first session we walk in the door and they're like, this is the show and this is who you are. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's me. Yeah, and, uh, for me, I, I'm caught up on the Black Clover manga. I gotta know what's happening with my boys. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm caught up on the Black Clover manga. When it comes to other projects, it's, uh, it can be tricky, uh, because for me, it is more about who the director is than who the, what property I'm working on. Like, um, for instance, if I'm going in for Chris George, I know he likes his actors to be surprised. So I won't stay abreast of the show because I know that it gives him a warm, fuzzy feeling to be able to surprise me with something. And I like to let him have that. And when I'm going into work with Cliff, I know that Cliff is going to do an incredible job of making sure I know exactly what's going on in the scene. And so frankly, I just don't need to watch it because Cliff is gonna get me there. Um, and then in other cases, it's uh, when it does involve the property, Sometimes it's an original, it's an original piece. It doesn't have source material, and it's coming out week to week. There's no research that can be done. You essentially, if you're lucky, can get a look at the episode in Japanese before you go in to record it. Um, but yeah, if I can do research on a property, if there is stuff available, I will then look to see who is directing it and what they want from me. Uh, Chris likes when I'm surprised. Cliff will just get me there on his own. Other folks like to hear that you know what's going on. Uh, so there's a lot of factors at play in that. If y'all don't ask us questions, we're going to start asking you questions. What anime or anime character were you guys uh, fans of growing up? Did any of those kind of inspire you to your methods and your work? Um, I... It's no secret that I'm a huge Laura Bailey fan. 
Um, so literally anything and everything Laura Bailey. Uh, I love Fruits Basket, Toru, um, Soul Eater. Um, God, I just, I love her voice. It's like candy. Um, yeah, she was one of my main influences to, to do this. I loved her voice and, and um, not that I've like changed my voice, but definitely like my acting uh, and choices that I make have been really influenced by her. Um, so yeah. Um, for me, it's the, I think it's probably a pretty standard uh, guy who grew up watching Toonami answer. Uh, your Gokus, your Gohans, your Yu Yu Hakusho's, uh, your Yusuke's, and your Kuwabara's, your guys, your fellas, your big loud screamy boys, um, that, you know, that red-coated kid in that Full Metal show, I love that boy, and his special brother. Like, just everything. As growing up, watching those big shonen animes, pretty much every single one of those boys was a hero for me. Uh, this is where I admit I'm a Kuwabara stan. Uh, even though he kind of objectively sucks. <laughs> love that guy. Um... Yeah, he's, I think, my favorite lunkhead. Like, oh my god, just a bundle of bad decisions. He's so fun. He's so fun. I love him so much. He's the kind of person that, like, if I were friends with him, I'd be like, ow, group hangs. But, like, because, you know, you don't want to be alone with him when he's got a crazy plan. But, um, like, definitely would hang out. Very cool guy. <laughs> oh, yep. Um, so, during Black when his brother was about to kill him, how did that go for you? When they all jumped on? I love that scene. Um, it is, I think, uh, it was a really hard scene to dub because in the J, all of those three fly in and they like threaten to kill this guy in three syllables or less. That's just not something you can do in English. So it was really, it was really difficult to translate. Like, when luck flies in, I think in the translation, all we really got to do there was have him introduce that the three of them were there. He pops in and he just says, hey. And then Asta says his thing. I don't remember exactly what he says because I remember in the booth just being like, oh man, <laughs> this is tense. <laughs> and then, you know, Magna gets his say and they all got a kill shot ready. Like, each one of them, each of these three, individually far, far, far weaker than Longris. Even together, far, far, far weaker than Longris. But Longris was so focused on murdering his own brother, he didn't notice three weaklings fly in and literally set up to kill him. They should have just done it. <laughs> but they didn't, because they're good. And that's one of the things about Black Clover that I think is, uh, it's fun. Black Clover is, uh, simple isn't the right word, but Black Clover has good guys. Black Clover has bad guys, and you, you are rarely asked to guess who is what. Uh, and when you know that this is, this is a bad guy, this is a bad guy straight up, has been a bad guy since they were introduced to us in the show, and ha is a bad guy up until the moment they either lose, die, or become friends with Asta. <laughs> 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 It's, it's, it's the best. You, I love it. I love a clean. I love a clean switch. Like just flip that good guy switch on the bad guy. I love it. <laughs> yep. Long ago. I think, I think in the 
dungeon, she really first started to question those feelings about him. Yeah. Uh, maybe not necessarily about if they were romantic or not, but just about, like, why are they even here? Yeah. Like, why do I care what this person does at all? Why am I so frustrated with this insignificant thing? Uh, just the intensity of emotion that she was able to have for this kid was confusing to her. I don't think that there was much soft side in that, and I'm not really remembering the... There have been so many attacks on the Capitol. The first one, <laughs> with, with, oh, with Rades and the zombies yes. and all that? Oh. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't, I don't, it was so long ago. It <laughs> yeah, was you, years you, ago you at this think. point. It's literally half a decade at this point <laughs> since we recorded that. Uh, can you jog my memory a little bit, the, the context of that situation? Oh, so her big scream yeah. and her... Basically towards the end when Asta was taken away in the um, jail magic by the was it seven of the uh, Midnight Moon. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. I think in that point, like, okay. I will say as somebody who's caught up on the manga, the real answer to your question is coming up. <laughs> but I think that it does start to show there, but I think it's not necessarily a soft side for Asta as much as it is a soft side for anyone. Uh, yeah. Yeah, a care of what happens to anyone. Noel's emotional growth throughout the series. It's, it's, yeah, and it's, when you grow up in a household like that, you do learn to be, to look out for yourself and you maybe not have the energy to care about others, uh, especially growing up in a household where nobody cared about you. So why would you care about anyone else? Again, it's that, the way that love and affection was modeled for her. Uh, but then yeah, just as the series progresses and as she becomes friends with the Black Bulls and realizes what friendship is, um, just a deepening of, of learning, uh, perceiving other people and then caring about them and yeah. Eventually she'll maybe she'll be like, oh, I love them. Mm -hmm. uh, but. but yeah, the soft side for Noel, uh, it first has to develop as an emotional organ before it can be honed and directed at anyone in particular. I think her soft side for her for a good long time is just something that happens out of the blue and that she deals with in the moment. And she's uh, scared of. She's terrified. <laughs> yeah. Noelle's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, is there one moment in the anime that you felt like your character really got the shine of I mean, just recently, I really enjoyed uh, the Vanica fight, uh, and I am, I, I mean, I assume the movie is going to pick that up, uh, so I'm excited to continue that. Um, uh, and I love whenever Noelle breaks out a new form, you know, Valkyrie armor, Valkyrie mermaid, uh, anytime she does that, I'm just like, yeah, and it's a big Noelle moment. Uh. Yeah, and then for me, it's it's kind of the opposite. Asta gets big, impressive moments all the time. I think my favorite moment where I feel like he got to shine as a character was when he dealt with his first death, um, the Veto fight, when Yami cuts through dimensions and destroys Veto spatially. Uh, <laughs> Veto, of course, dies, because you do not survive space <laughs> dividing you in half. And Asta rolls up with two shattered arms and a bouquet of flowers with no idea how to handle this. Because I think up to that point, everyone he fought eventually saw where he was coming from. Uh, Mars, Radies, uh, not on screen yet, but Rev G. Like, everyone he had fought survived, and some of the people he fought explicitly told him that he taught them something. And for this guy to just believe 
in despair until the moment Yami had to murder him. He just doesn't understand. And he's just standing there in front of Yami, in front of this grave, with flowers that he can't even physically put down. And he doesn't know what to say or how to react. And so he just looks at Yami and he just says, like, I don't even know why I'm here, but it just feels like the right thing to do is kind of the vibe of that scene. And I, I really like it because it's something that we don't see a lot of from Asta. Um, and it's something that I would really like for him to get another crack at. And I, I think I saw you had your hand up. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, did you guys ever get to meet your Japanese counterparts at any of the shows you've done before? Not yet. No, that is, um, yeah, they rarely come over here. Uh, and uh, so that would be awesome. I maybe, would love to. Maybe if the Black Clover movie really blows up, uh, we will all be at a con together, but uh, I would love to. Uh, that would be, that would be something really special. Uh, but no, have not had that opportunity yet. Yep. Um, I have two questions. Um, one, uh, using only examples that exist in the show, what kind of magic power would you like to have? And two, what magic knight squad would you like to be part of? Um, <laughs> this is easy. Um, Mimosa's magic, uh, one, because I am very clumsy and I'm always hurting myself, uh, and I'd love to heal myself. Also, I don't have a green thumb. Uh, all of my plants die. I have one right now. I bought it a month ago. It is almost dead. I'm so sad. We're doing everything we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, to, yeah, I would love to make plants and heal myself. Uh, and then two, the coral peacocks. <laughs> Just seems chill. Just seems chill. Uh, I think for me, I would, um, <sighs> it's time magic, it's Julius's time magic, <laughs> it's Julius's time magic, I don't care about all the cool combat stuff it can do, I just think it would be awesome to not die. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it would be really sick to come back 14 when I died. <laughs> with all of my memories and stuff, that would rule. I'd come back like super empathetic and really prepared for the world. Like, that would be amazing. At 14, could you imagine being 14 years old and having the empathy that you have now as like a grown adult? That would be wild. I was 14 years old. I spent $700 on Yu-Gi-Oh cards at 14. And then I gave them away at 17. That's not something I do when I come back for my second go around. Like, that's just, it's time magic. I make so many mistakes. <laughs> uh, and then yeah, squad. Uh, Aqua Deer. I just love the, love the mascot, love the cloak. It's got that nice puppy frill on it. It seems warm. <laughs> oh, yep. Um, what do you think drove uh, Quake Oleon and his brother's initial motive to be rivals to Asta? Oh, okay. Uh, I think that's a really interesting question. Um, and I mean, look at Mary Leona. Yeah. Look at how love is. That it's another family dynamic thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, they're very competitive. They're very, and that, you know, that is how they say that I like you. They say, you are my rival. But it, it yeah. means, I respect you so much that I want to take you on. Yeah. Uh, to acknowledge someone as a rival in the Vermilion family is, I think, a very important thing, particularly for one side of it. Of course, Mimosa is a Vermilion, but she is not a direct, like, familial, a direct fem nuclear familial relation yeah. to the, the, the Marileonos, the Poigolions, the Leopolds, um, but they are both from that bloodline. I think the royal family, I, just, I, I won't talk Black Clover mechanics for too long, but the royal family started with the Silva Million family that eventually branched off into Silva and then Vermilion, uh, and they each kind of have their own styles. The Vermilions are very very warm, open, competitive. Even 
Mariliona. Like the warm thing manifests a little more um, concretely with the actual manifestation of fire. They all possess that same warmth, uh, but it is a dangerous warmth. It is a volatile warmth, but it is also as sure as the air in the sky. Like it will be there for you, uh, but it's going to want something in return because you can't have fire without fuel. Uh, and their whole, their fuel as a family is direct, violent competition. And to bring someone into their fold is to invite them to that tournament. Uh, and I think that just a simple liking of Asta is what made them acknowledge him as a rival. It's just because this is a cool dude that we want to hang out with and we hang out by fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you guys' favorite villain? Ooh. It's a non-traditional answer, but the current protagonist in the anime I'm directing right now, uh, Kinji Ninomiya, he's like, what if a used car salesman got isekai and manipulated his way to the top of the capitalist food chain in this new world, and he's a, he's a full villain, and I love him so much. <laughs> My brain is dead. <laughs> uh, goodness, who who are villains? What villains? Uh, Vanico, Vanico villain. Oh, um, I, okay. Um, <laughs> licked villain, kinda. Oh, uh, I love Lick. Like, here. Uh, the priest That's... from Midnight Mass, villain. Yeah, Midnight Mass on Netflix. Watch it. Uh, it's a Mike Flanagan joint. Very yeah, if good. you like Hill House, Bly Manor, it's got all that stuff for you in it. Um, he's good in that. Uh, the villain in Die Hard, good villain. I haven't seen that one. Well, that's going to be I know, that's that. we're going <laughs> <laughs> Christmas is coming up. Um, <laughs> is Die Hard a Christmas movie? I mean, yeah. I mean it's, a, it's, it's a question that I don't know enough about film to answer honestly, but it takes place during Christmas, so... Sure. Uh, yeah, so it's a Christmas is during a Christmas party, a man goes through some ducks like as if they were chimneys, has a great time, uh, have a few laughs, all of that. Uh, perhaps, perhaps a Christmas film, but I think more than anything, a uh, Alan Rickman gets thrown off a building film, um, which is a classic genre. I'm sure we're all aware. Uh, it's a great one of those. <laughs> Any other questions? How are we looking? We've got like 15 minutes. Nice. Yeah. If you could drop into any anime universe, which one would it be? Ooh. Uh, which ones are safe? <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, no, I'm trying to think of like, what's my favorite slice of life? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, yeah, put me in, put me in Nichijo. Put me in Nichijo, that sounds so fun. Like, oh my god, they survive anything in that show. You can get fully suplexed by a three-year-old into concrete at first, and you're fine. In fact, you do 40 spins, and it looks really fun. Yeah, Nichijo. I was just gonna say Hioka, because I would, like, get... I would go to those kids and be like, y'all are in love with each other. Pair up. None of them will confess their feelings. You here. You here. Now kiss. Uh, another one for me, I think, uh, Tsurune? I don't know if anyone's seen that. Ooh, it's a really, Sarune. really beautiful. Well, a lot of people get hit by cars in that one. A lot of people get hit by cars in Sarune, um, but you know what? A lot of people get hit by cars in real life. Uh, it's, that's, a, that's a risk you take every day walking around the city. Um, but one thing about Sarune that I think is very cool is that it is a beautifully animated show and also archery. So like, yeah, it'd be cool to maybe learn to do a bunch of archery, uh, but also if you ask me to pick between that and surviving a full suplex doing the cool roller coaster spin, I'm gonna pick the spin. Um, and if I were a braver person, perhaps Hunter Hunter. But, uh, <laughs> yep. Y'all know any of the boy packs from Tokyo Ghoul? 
Um, yeah, it's Tyndall. Yeah, um, I, I have it. Um, I think it's got. I think it's got Monica. I think Monica's in it. Monica. Love Monica. Monica's great. Um, Rena Valencia. She just had a baby recently. Um, yeah, and then I know the second season. I think it's like Damon Mills. Sarah's in there for sure. Um, it, 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 honestly, like if you're asking the question, do you all know any of the voice actors from X Funimation show? The answer is probably yeah. Well, like, yeah, we don't hang out, but, well, when we went to the studio, we would run into each other. We would talk to each other in the lobby. And you know? uh, as both of us are doing some directing now, that mm -hmm. obviously gets you in front of a lot of people, because uh, they're working for you. Uh, so, yeah, I think there's probably not a face or name in the Funimation building in the last five years that I haven't hit, excuse me, at least bumped into. Yeah. We're not like super close friends with any of the Tokyo Ghoul cast, though. No, I, I couldn't even tell you who all is in it. So, but yeah, probably. <laughs> Have you all voiced any characters that have made a theatrical release here um, in the US? Huh. I don't think any of the movies I've been in have hit theaters. I think there were DVD dubs. I mean, I think I think I was bits in one of the recent My Hero movies. I, I haven't I certainly haven't done anything big that has had a theatrical release. Yeah, like same. maybe bits in Walla. I did some bits in that Maroni Kenshin live action deal. Uh, got burned alive a couple times, got hit with a few swords. <laughs> it's fun. I love that stuff. Uh, it looks like Black Clover might be the one though. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. Other questions? Yes. Uh, can you tell us what your dream voice acting role would be in mm -hmm. the fandom? The answer that I like to give was um, it was Mayaka and Ioka, and I got it. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I literally cried. Uh, like, I came in and Mike was like, you're going to be playing this girl. And I was like, <gasps> um, and uh, I kept, I kept it all in. Sorry. Boom. Uh, I kept it all in. Uh, and then I cried a little when I got in my car because I was so happy. Um, but that show is really special to me for a number of reasons. Uh, and yeah, and for the most part, I try not to get my hopes up too much on other things. You know, they're... You know, every season there's a show that I'm like, oh, I want to get that one, but it depends on a lot of factors that I'm not in control of. So, yeah, uh, the the roles the roles that are still on the table, I don't like to think about. I like to put in when I can, and then just kind of forget it because 90% of the job is rejection, uh, and it's probably higher than that, honestly. Yeah, this is about it. Uh, <sighs> The dream roles for me are those same ones that I mentioned, the ones that I'm never going to get that opportunity for because they're already done. They're, they're done. Those, those dream roles for me will remain dreams because they are already iconic with the people that have voiced them. But I would have loved a crack at Yusuke. I would have loved a crack at Edward Elric. Uh, I would have loved to take a stab at an adult Gohan. Um, but as... You know, now when I see auditions, I just look for things like that, you know? Um, and that was a big part of Asta. Like when I got that audition, I was like, I haven't heard of this. And I read a couple chapters and I was like, oh, it's the exact sort of thing that I've been dreaming of. <laughs> uh, and I put in for it and then I got a call back for it, put in for it again. We recorded the trailer and then we started episode one. And uh, so in a way, it wasn't, you know, exactly my dream role, because my dream roles are all done, but it was still a dream come true, because it was one of, like, this generation's big projects. Like, um, you know, this room right now, it's fairly full. See all you guys? You know, I can... We've had several questions from the same folks because, you know, 
some folks are nervous, there's not a lot of people in the room, but I think that every convention we have gone to, as more people have aged in to the convention going scene, those people are people that grew up watching Black Clover over the last five, six years. And it seems to, every year, not necessarily find more of an audience, but the audience it has finds its way into the convention scene and the like the actual uh, the actual decision making scene uh, so the dream role is the one you know that everybody looks at and goes wow look at this cool thing you did for a really long time and I think that thing for me is going to end up being Black Clover but that I might not see the full results of that for another five years or so all right, we've got about five minutes left, uh, so probably one more question. Any takers? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, my God. Oh, God. God. Y'all should fight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we've had one from you yet, have we? I'll okay. take one from you. Can you say your character's favorite one that you have? I mean, I love to pull out uh, in, uh, insect. <laughs> Or just a, I'm royalty, you know. Yeah, this is like the good, the good, the catchphrases and stuff like that. Uh, my favorite line uh, for Asta is, I think I've already said as much, but like, this book's got the right cover. Like that. Yeah, uh, when Asta gets to be funny, those are some of my favorites. Cool, and that was a short one, so we probably have time for another one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh God! I am not familiar <laughs> with. Do you have Moguro leaf juice? <laughs> you don't. What's what's latte? And then finding out that that is the basic order <laughs> and getting really upset. <laughs> so just, oh, pumpkin spice. That that sounds interesting. Yes, um, I I'll I'll have that. What do you mean this is the basic order? I'm royalty, you know, I, I have a special order. I just picture like them calling out pumpkin spice latte for and then three other names. Yeah, <laughs> they get to know so of. furious. <laughs> and she realizes that she And then when they order. call her, she just she's too embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then right behind you had one as well, right? Are you no? just pointing? Hmm. Oh. Fantastic. Two minutes left. Anyone want to get another under the wire? Let's do it. I've never seen Black Clover. Hell yeah. Just sort of trying to piece together it. Sell me on it. All right, sell you on Black Clover. Uh, do you like when a kid doesn't give up, even though all of the circumstances dictate that he probably should? Black Clover is a show for you. He will not ever give up. Uh, he will never give up, and he will never give up on you. Uh, do you have a sales pitch for Black Clover? It's got a good Sunday in it. There you go. <laughs> and lots of yelling. Oh, lots also, of yelling. it has a really good opening. The, it has a really good first opening theme song, which means oh. that when they deploy the first opening theme song for a dramatic moment, it always, always works. Uh, because it's just got an amazing first open. And then, yeah, they, they have several good opens. Black Rover oh, is so Black good. Rover's good. Black Rover. That one's a great. I love the sort of discordant piano that opens up with. Yeah, like, that's a great song. Uh, I think that brings us to just about the end of the time that we have here. Cool. Yeah, um, we, I'm not sure what time it is tomorrow, but we have a Lost in Translation panel. We uh, took Tom. some... Okay, Tom. Uh, we took some scenes, anime scenes that we've been in. We put them through Google Translate uh, like 20 times, and they are gibberish now. And we are going to read them, uh, and we are going to call up some people from the audience to help read too. So if that is your jam, and you're here tomorrow, make sure to check it out. That uh, 11 tomorrow morning. 11. And 11 then, tomorrow morning. And then they have autographs at 12:30. Sure did. Awesome. Autographs, like, right after. So, cool. Um, thank you, guys. You've been a great audience.
Uh, the best never changed.